<clears throat> okay, thank you, Ching. Uh, okay. Yes, okay. Uh, let's start the, my second lecture uh, about the spectrum rigidity and the joint in integrability for higher dimensional and also for diffeomorphisms. And okay, uh, please, like um, a little bit sorry, like yesterday, I'm a little bit fast for, for the talk. So if you have any questions or comments, and just please stop me, okay, anytime. And uh, okay. Uh, okay. So yesterday I, I introduced something about like the local rigidity, which says like uh, we constrain some uh, linear and also of automorphisms and we satisfy some generic assumptions. And we show like that for any F, which is uh, C1 close to it, then like the strong stable bundle and the unstable bundle of F is the joint integrable if and only if it has the spectrum rigidity along the weak stable bundles. Okay, that is some kind of like the, the local rigidity because that we, we need like our F to be uh, C1 close to A. So, but the problem is like uh, um, today I will introduce some something about, about the global things like which I, I don't need like my F, which is uh, C1 close to its uh, linear part. And the thing is like, you know, like uh, uh, the thing is like in some sense, like in, in higher dimension, especially in higher dimensions, like uh, the 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 anos of diffuse, like uh, maybe have uh, infinite many connected components, and it in particularly like if you dimension is high enough, like the torus even may have different like uh, some structures, and this makes you like it possible to to have a lot of different uh, components of anos of diffeomorphisms, and moreover, like uh, these things makes like in higher dimensions this the Topological classification is, in some sense, uh, is a very rough things and couldn't give you too many informations and for for these things. Okay. So I, I the first thing is like I want to give you something about the, the about four leaf country. Thing. So so now right now I, I can string like my f to be an anosov and also like it is uh, partially uh, absolutely partially hyperbolic that the stable bundle is split also like like before like split into the strong stable bundles and the weak stable bundles so that is the okay that is for the absolutely partially hyperbolic and also I still in the setting of like my strong stable bundle and unstable bundles are jointly integrable. So this first thing is what happens about like uh, the linear part of my of my f. That is uh, what what happens for the for its action on the on the like the first homology groups. So so the first thing is like I can tell you like right now is the linear part is also partially hyperbolic, and you, you know like this partially hyperbolic splitting will be have the same dimension to our f, and so you will have a splitting like this. Okay, you, you will have the splitting like this. That, that's for the linear part of my F. And also like you can see here is our mu, which is the, 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 the gap between like the strong stable and the weak stable. So for our linear part for my A, it also have the same thing. Okay, also have the same splitting for partial hypothesis. And moreover, and we can show like in, in, because in this setting, we don't have any information about like my F is dynamical coherent or not. And okay, now with the assumption like my strong stable and unstable is jointly integrable, I can tell you like my F is also dynamically coherent. So that in particular here, you can say like, actually the CS foliation is actually the stable foliation of F which exists. But this too, the weak stable and the unstable, right now I can tell you that it is integrable. Okay, it is integrable. So this gives you like a, a CU foliation in some sense, and the intersection will gives you the weak stable foliation. And now I can tell you is that like my F is actually fully conjugate to A. That means like it preserves all three foliations. Okay, that's, that's the thing. So the thing is like, for, for at, at first, like for my F, okay, I will write F here, I will have a strong stable and also a two dimensional, two dimensional things, which is the stable, okay? That is a strong stable. And we don't know whether we have the center and also we have the unstable things. And I tell you that if these things are jointly integrable, okay, it is jointly integrable. Okay, uh, it's, it's okay for this. 
Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, so and, and tells you, okay, right now, actually, I also have a CU foliations here and at the intersection, we have a weak stable foliation. Moreover, I tells you like, okay, in these things for my A, I will have that split. Okay, that is a weak stable and that is unstable. That is for my A. And we have an H that is the conjugation H, which preserves all these three foliations. That is the four countries. Okay, that is the four countries. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, that's the four countries. That gives you the picture. And what I want to mention here is that, uh, you know, like in, in this setting, like in generally in higher dimension, it's, it's totally in some sense, like if your F is not close to A or not isotopic to A along some paths, it will don't have these things. So that's actually have the problem. Like uh, my question is like, even you are anosov on, on D torus and you know like your topological conjugate to is your, your linear part and assume like you partially have, have the partially hyperbolic split. But my question is, is your linear part is partially hyperbolic or not? I think like no one answered this question, right? Because like for me, I need to assume like my strong stable and unstable is jointly integrable, which is a very strong assumption. But without this assumption, we know nothing about like what happens in high dimensional and is dynamically coherent or not. And whether in this setting, we can give some, some kind of F, which is anosov, also partially hyperbolic, but not a dynamical coherent. Is there some examples like this? I, I think we don't know. As far as my knowledge, I don't know. Yeah. And also here, like it's, it will be the same, like whether F is dynamically coherent or not, uh, the, the, and whether it is leaf conjugate to its linear part. So, so I think it, in, at least in high dimension, we know nothing about that. But for us, we, we at least we can tell you something when the strong stable and unstable are jointly integral. Okay, I, I think like the, the proof is, uh, is quite simple in some sense, not, not so simple, but uh, it's just to try to use the Brings argument. The first thing is like you, you will have a, a lemma which tells you, okay, if you have a C0 foliation on D torus with C1 leaves, and if there is a homeomorphism, home, uh, home topic identity such that it maps the foliation to the linear one, then this foliation will be quasi -isom, uh, is uh, quasi isometric. And you know, like that, for quasi isometric things in, in, in the D torus, uh, and the foliation, if it is not quasi isometric, that means like the distance in the leaf is compared. No, you don't. Is comparing with it will be goes through like that. That two points that is not for C isometric. That is not quasi isometric. Like two points, like they are actually close in some sense in the universal cover in, in the manifolds, but in the leaf space they are maybe go very large. But if you maps to the linear, then the foliation will be something you you can say that it will like some have some periodicity. Like this gives you like it is quasi isometric. Okay, that's the first thing. And okay, I'm yeah, thank you. Okay, and now like I can give you a simple proof. It's just like a, a bring arguments, and you 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 need to deduce like uh, if you are uh, some kind of your strong stable and unstable are jointly integrable, then it will gives you like your strong stable foliations are quasi isometric. And for because for unstable foliations, this lemma already gives you that because the conjugacy maps the unstable to the unstable. So you just need to show like the strong stable to the the strong stable to, to linear foliations. So that's repeatedly used the argument we mentioned yesterday, like because you can make the intersections, because right now the joint integral one is subfoliated by minimal linear foliations, so it is linear. And right now, you know, like these things is a uh, stable, which is linear intersect with some linear one. This tells you like your strong stable is also linear foliation and it is quasi isometric. And for unstable, it is the same. And so, and yeah, it tells you they are quasi isometric. So you can apply some rings argument, like a, just like a try to calculate in triangulation things and tells you, okay, it tells you like it is, uh, it is, uh, shows like it is integrated, like you have a center of unstable foliation, which is a linear and a minimal, okay? Because it is the, 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 weak, uh, the CU foliation is a locally unique integer because the bring argument tells you like, 
that's the place where we use absolutely partially hyperbolic because like that's the thing it will grow spring fast okay and now you, you can have the like the something like the center unstable and it these two intersections stable foliation and the cu foliations gives you an invariant and which is uh, it's like this and it is a linear and also it is a invariant because like stable and this this cu foliation are both some kind of up after conjugacy is also like a invariant okay okay right now we know like it is a f invariant and a transverse in the in, in this foliation and okay now you map these two things by h which are two linear foliation and in a invariant and also like in the stable bound of a they are transverse okay they are transverse so this gives you what this actually gives you your a has a linear invariant splitting but now it is not a dumb splitting it's just a linear splitting and it matches like uh, the stable that i here are marked as strong stable to the strong stable of f and weak stable to the weak stable of f and the unstable to unstable of f that's preserves just like the picture right now the only thing i need to show is here here is like we 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 have a dominant splitting for a here and this thing is will be get it very easily because we have a flow conjugacy as said preserve everything and we look at in the universal cover okay look at in the universal cover because it is uh, uh its identity they have bounded totally bounded and you look at every points in this uh, strong stable and weak stable and you look at the estimation because you iterated negatively points here are growth as the weak stable of f and which is uh, uh, slowly then uh, the power of mu uh, minus mu uh, and this is uh, grows very fast and here it will be the same and this gives you like actually you can have the same okay it's actually a partially hyperbolic splitting and it gives you okay you have actually truly a dominant splitting and the gap is is mu inside okay this gives you a partially hyperbolic splitting so the argument is something some kind of a little bit uh, tricky but uh, it is something gives you gives you the partial hyperbolicity of the linear parts okay now that's the first part of these things and you, you can see that in this argument in this proof we don't need anything about irreducibility anything else we just need like like my f is just c1 that's enough okay uh, any questions or okay thank you and now I, I want to say something about like my, our main theory about the global rigidity and right now the setting is it will be the same because like uh, as i mentioned yesterday like when you are reducible you can construct it some counter examples even locally close to the linear part so that makes you like also you need irreducible okay irreducible and right now my f need to be absolutely partially hyperbolic and it sets it's here and also satisfy the center bunching condition and i i will explain the, this a little later and so right now my conclusion is like if my strong stable and unstable is in jointly integrable then i can also have the have that uh, uh, the uh, spectrum rigidity in the weak stable formation that is first thing i will say like my f has a finest dominant splitting on the weak stable bundle with the same dish mention of my a because right now as my i mentioned like in theorem one like my linear part of a also have an absolute partially hyperbolic split and so it will have a weak stable bundle right it will have a here okay i just try the uh, uh sorry uh the partially hyperbolic split absolutely that it dep that doesn't depends on the okay i will absolutely actually hyperbolic okay ph that is my df with ess is smaller than mu smaller than the minimum norm of df of weak stable and it's also smaller than df weak, weak stable yeah yeah it is a uniform it doesn't depends on the points okay uh, okay that is minimal of the f of u okay and here here is thing is like okay here the thing is here for my linear parts because like this is weak stable 
it because it may have a lot of dimensions. I don't know how many, what's the dimension it is, but because it is linear, so it will has a finite dominant splitting, which is corresponding to the absolute values of our its uh, eigen eigen values, like uh, in, in this space, right? So in this space, it may split in a lot of space, right? It may in a lot of subspace, and then I will tell tell you that my f also have the same finite dominant splitting with the same dimension. Okay, with the same dimension, it can also splits. And also, and then I will say like my F is spectrally rigid along every these small bundles. Notice like in each of these small bundles, like for, for, for my linear part, all eigenvalues in the same bundle have the same absolutely values. Okay, and this tells you like all exponents of my A in the, each of this Li weak stable is the same. So I tells you like my F is the same. That is a spectrum rigidity like this before. And notice here, I don't assume anything about the, the genericity of my F. And I don't know which each, each this bundle was the dimension. It may be uh, in some sense higher dimension, but okay, that's, uh, that's the global theory of uh, global rigidity of our main theory. Okay, uh, any questions for this statement or for these things? Okay, please. Oh, because like, you know, like the thing is like, actually it is about pure, you can just say about periodic things, but you know, like the periodic measures are dense in the space of ergodic measures. And this tells you, okay, it's, it will be the same. All ergodic measures have the same exponents. So everything will be the same. You can say about uh, uh, ergodic measures, but uh, actually for, for my proof, I just need to, to show for, for periodic objects. Okay. Okay, and I, I have several remarks about, okay, oh, that's the picture. Okay, you can see which is better than this one. So, so it tells you, okay, you have these things and uh, that is uh, this joint integrability tells you like the, in the weak stable bundle, your F is looks like almost the same like your, your A. But the thing is, okay, yes, yes. Okay, there, there are se several remarks. The first thing is, as I said, it's a global thing. I don't need it to be C1 close to, to A. I don't need that thing. So, um, but on the other hand, I don't also don't know whether the, it, it's actually in the same connected component or it's past connected. I don't know. I don't have any information about that. Okay. And the second thing is like, that's the, the key point for, at least for me, is like uh, to get a dominant splitting, we usually need some C1 robust properties. Because usually I think the first thing is like by Manier, which shows like on surface, a C1 robustly transitive diffeomorphisms is Anosov. And he gives the, the best way to, to, you know, in C1 topology, you can use Frank's lemmas and to perturb the co-cycle to get a dominant splitting. And then it is showed, I think, like uh, in, in higher dimensions by uh, Christian and uh, Lorenzo and Enric, they, they show like, uh, if you are robustly transitive, then you are uh, volume partially hyperbolic, right? You, you have this dominant splitting things. So you, usually you need a robust transitive, like uh, that is in a neighborhood, you need some, information about neighborhood of your dynamics. And also later for something like a far from homing tangency or far from homing bifurcations and gives you the dominant speed. And so, but in here, we don't need anything about the, the, the different mobilisms in a neighborhood of the system. We just need the system itself to get a finer dominant split. Okay, to split the bundle separately. Yes. And also like, if like you have some something like the generic assumption of well, the, your your uh, your your linear part that is uh, like every sub bundle is, is two dimensional like it's a complex rotation things and okay this will gives you like the conjugacy is also c one plus uh, c one plus alpha smooth along the weak stable the proof is the same the, the, but here we don't have a. Uh, yeah, we don't have any assumption in, in our theory. But if you want to get more for smooth controversy, you need these things. Okay, and the cent for, finally is some kind of center bunching condition. And for center bunching condition here, because like your center is uh, is contracting, so you just need half of these things, which tells you okay, your your unstable need to expand a, a little bit stronger. 
For example, if you are code dimension one and uh, close that your unstable is one dimensional and you will automatically get like a, uh, something like and what you're preserving it will automatically gives you like you satisfy this center bunching condition and here the center bunching is just to guarantee like your strong stable and unstable joint integrable will gives you a c1 plus alpha smooth foliations that is thing and okay I, I have to admit like here this is a totally uh, a technical assumption and this technical assumption actually gives you some restrictions about the theorems you apply because actually you will need like your linear part is also satisfy some center function things. And I, I don't know, I'm not sure whether this assumption can be removed or not, but until right now in, in our proofs, we rely on, on these things. Okay, so I, I get something about the global rigidity, but I need to pay a little bit for, for the center function. That's the price I paid for that. Okay. okay. <sighs> Right now, and, and we can have a corollary like uh, in, in code dimension one, that means like my unstable is uh, one dimensional and all the spectrum, uh, all the eigenvalues of A are real. And in, in this thing, since you are code dimension one, so you are automatically irreducible and actually you, any iteration is also irreducible. And this tells you, okay, and uh, so for any F, which is uh, I'm setting is what you're preserving. And so like you have a splitting, uh, partial, uh, absolutely partially hyperbolic splitting like this, and your strong stable is one dimensional, then you can tell us like your strong stable with unstable is integrable. And you have some information about metric entropy and it will gives you like you are C1 plus alpha smooth conjugate to A. Because here this smooth conjugate tells you like in the weak stable, you will have the, uh, you will have the splitting and the spectrum rigidity. And then uh, the, the metric entropy information will guarantee like your unstable bundle also have the periodic data. Like means every periodic points have the same linear growth exponents with, with, uh, to, to its linear part. So this is the guarantee. And then conservative gives you the information about the strong stable. And so you have pure data everywhere like every period points have the same linear uh, exponents with this linear part. So this gives you like you are C1 plus conjugate. Okay, that's, uh, that's uh, some, some simple corollary. Okay, yeah, and gives you the smooth conjugate things. Of course, you can change the condition about metric entropy and the conservative by the condition like uh, your F in the strong stable and the unstable have the periodic data and it will give you the same thing. Okay, gives you the same thing. <clears throat> Okay, uh, now I, I will illustrate the main ideas about the proof. Actually, the proof is like you repeatedly use the thing about how the defending approximation of the strong stable foliation. As I explained in the last talk, right now your, your H maps your strong stable foliations of F to the strong stable foliations of, of your A, the linear parts. So it will be dense and you have, have some quantitative estimation for these things. That is for some K radius of K of your strong stable foliations. It is actually some K power minus alpha for some alpha larger than zero dense in the whole manifold. And it can give you play some games, which we, we showed yesterday. But here is the thing you need to play a lot and it's actually the same game and play repeatedly and get you a lot of informations the first thing is like you have the rigidity of the smallest exponents in the weak stable okay that means the smallest exponents in every period points we can show it is the same i think this part is quite similar to yesterday okay and now, you know, like for every period points, because the dimension of weak stable may be very high, very high, and I don't know how many eigenvalues are inside, right? We don't know how many, but we just know that the smallest one everywhere are equal. And then we can show like the dimension with, of this uh, uh, smallest one is the same everywhere. Okay, we can show like the, the smallest one dimension is, every, is the same. And then we use some kind of, for, for periodic points, we can look at the patient stable manifolds in the weak stable. Okay, it gives you actually a foliation and this foliation will exist on the weak stable manifolds of every periodic points. Okay, and it has some kind of holonomy invariance, which allowed us to extend this weak stable, the minimal weak stable foliation to the whole manifolds, to, to the whole TD and to the whole 
and it is some kind of SU foliation holonomy invariant. And in this part, we need like the, the holonomy of SU foliations is C1. That's the key part we, we use the center bunching. And uh, yeah. Okay. And then finally, we can have like some, some uniform exponents gap, which tells you, okay, any exponents which is different with the, the minimal smaller one, and it is uniformly larger than that one. Okay, with some, which data is independent of the periodic points. And you can tell us like, okay, it gives you actually a dominant split. Okay, it will gives you actually a dominant split. And all these parts actually play the same game, same techniques of the strong state, uh, the, this part that, uh, uh, okay. And okay, and then you can allow you to play some kind of induction to get a final and a final. And also we need to show like this minimal exponents about your F is actually the same with some kind of the minimal exponents of your A in, in, and have the same dimension. Okay, that's the, 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 the main idea for, for the proof. Okay, the first thing is like, uh, is something like, uh, which is holonomy and the translation invariant, and which tells you like, actually like your SU, for the, the holonomy map of your SU foliation would be some kind of, uh, with some, okay. Uh, Okay, and let's say you, you have some kind of, uh, uh, okay, I will draw two dimensional and for some X, which is weak stable, and you will have some kind of uh, uh, Y, also weak stable, of your Y, and you have some SU foliation, which gives you some SU foliations, that is your, that is the SU foliations. And you know, like that, as I said, like your contribution is actually your H preserves these things. So for the linear one, you will also have the foliation that is for the linear one. And this is HX and you have the weak stable of X, uh, HX, that is your X. And also that is, that is the weak stable of HY. And you know, like your H preserves the weak stable foliation preserve the strong stable foliation, preserves unstable foliation. So your H preserves everything and it maps to the linear foliation. So that is some kind of linear foliation. Okay, that's the linear foliation, okay, stable. So, and it preserves everything. That tells you, okay, that's if you use your Z is here, that would be the holonomy map of your Z. And so you can map Z to HZ, and by the holonomy map of this one, and two, this is a holonomy map about say, I will say L for that one of Z to this point, and you can put H minus back. So this makes like you have a commuting things and tells you, okay, like your SU foliation is actually like the holonomy of your SU foliation. Actually, you can compose with H and uh, that is the linear translation and by H minus. Okay, notice that the, the foliation about SU foliation, it is a linear foliation. So that is a translation. Okay, so, so you can tell us like uh, you, you will have this, uh, you have this things. Okay, linear translation. And in particularly, you know, like the key point is no matter how far of, uh, uh, of this X, Z, uh, X and Y, like in the, in the SU foliation, no matter how far of this, these things always holds, and this can give you like some estimations about the diameter of the set, because for a set in this weak stable, and, and it's like it has diameter which is larger than epsilon, then it will always like the, after holonomy maps, it's larger than some data, no matter how far of this X and Y, that's the same. Okay. And actually the same holds for the strong stable foliation because strong stable foliation is contained in SU foliation. And it's also maps to the leaf. So this, uh, this graphs here, the commuting graph is here also holds for that. Okay. So, okay, the proof is just uh, uh, 
Okay, sorry. The, the, the proof is just the same. It tells you you preserve everything, and then the conjugacy gives you like a, it's also commuting with SU for the missions. That's the picture here. I draw it here. And then you can tell us like it is holonomy map is on H composed with some translation on the porous and composed with H minus. That is the proof very, very clearly for this. Okay. And because we will need these things because in, in the future, you remember for the argument yesterday, we need some place, some defending games, like which tells us I need the holonomy map to be very, very far. And actually the distance along strong stable is tends to infinite, but I need to some control of the, of the image of these things. Okay, and so right now I can prove like the theorem two, so separate to several steps. As I mentioned, like the first thing is to show like the smallest exponents at every periodic point is the same. Okay, I will show by contradiction. And first thing is like, I can pick some points, which is also like a P, which is almost the smallest one. It's almost the smallest one. Ah. ah, no. Uh, for why, why I need this thing? Ah, because locally the holonomy is C1. You can control it. And you, you see here, just because for the later use, I need to pick the point P and Xn, like in the home strong stable but the distance in the strong stable tends to infinite. You can, you, you see one smooth holonomy in C1 just can locally control, but when you tend to infinite, you don't know whether the derivative tends to infinite or maybe tend to zero. So you lose a lot of control in here. So that's, and, but this one gives you, okay, no matter you, how long you go, you have uniformly control and which is crucial in our later estimations. Uh, no, just in, in detours, just in detours. But uh, in detours, like a strong stable will be something irrational and you go further, 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 very far. It, it will give you something. Okay. And right now I, I can pick the game like, like yesterday. It's like I pick two periodic points, which P is almost the, con the strongest contracting one. So at some point P, okay, that is something I contained in the weak stable bundle. Okay, and in, in this weak stable bundle, you, you may separate it and you will have some smallest, ex, the smallest exponents, which I weak stable, oh, S of minimal of P, which is the strongest one here. And I can find some points, which is a Q, which is in, in this part, the smallest one is something larger than that one. Then that is Q, maybe larger, not, not so strong. So it may contract a little weaker. And then I will try to find some points like in the strong stable foliation. So my P, the strong stable foliation, that is the strongest one. And it will go through, go through, go through a lot of times, maybe like that, because you are in detours. And as I said, it may have some points like here. I will take this will be Xn. These two are very close. And like this distance will be some Kn. And this distance will be some C times Kn minus alpha. Okay, power minus alpha, something close. And you, you can take some disk here. I, I will took the disk here. That is my disk, that's my D here, because it may be, I don't know how, how's the dimension. I don't know, but it's, it is at least one dimension. And so you will contain some disk here and it tells you, okay, you can, that is the patient stable manifolds associated to that. And you can look at the holonomy map of that. And the first thing is like for this D, when it is close, the growth rate of this D is almost really like the, the exponents of B in, in the weak stable, the smallest one. The diameter of it is iterated like that. Okay, that's some small D around P. That's the thing. And then I will take the holonomy map of my DN comes to here. That is your DN. That is your DM by the strong stable holonomy comes to here. And you know that, uh, as I said, I as I explained, like this DN, you need because Xn 
will tend to infinite, very, very long, and you need some control about the diameter of DN. And this graph tells you, this commuting things tells you like your DN has some diameter, which is lower, which is, has a uniform gap with zero, right? It's not tends, it will never tends to zero. Okay. And also it will not tends to something like a very large is also, okay. And this tells you, okay, I can go with some kind of, uh, by some, something like it has some estimation like that. And I will play some M and, and K -N games. That is your XN comes here and you can iterate it maybe to here. That is FKN of XN here. And in the first KN steps, like your Q may comes to here. And these two points are very close in the first KN steps. Okay, they are close in the first KN steps. And what is MN? MN is the first time like your XN entering the with, uh, with P is with distance one. So that is the that is thing. And so you know you, that is what is your KN and MN. And you know that for the first KN steps, this contracting rate of your DN is close to the contracting rate of Q, which is weaker than the contracting rate of P, right? That is the first KN steps tells you. And this part, this will go through here. So they are very close, it is weak. And then for the rest, it may be contracting stronger. But as I said, like P is the contracting strongest one, almost one. So that contracting rate is at most like something like uh, about P. So the first the key in steps tells you like the contracting rate of like Q and the rest is the contracting rate is almost like a P. Okay. Oh, okay, that's, the, that's a picture for, for this one. Okay, and so that's the first k n steps, very close, and then the rest of uh, m n minus k n steps that's here comes to here. Okay, and from the Duventing estimation tells you, okay, it's actually positive proportional. Uniformly, you have your k m is larger than some delta times m n. Okay, that's the Duventing things tells you. Then you can get an estimation about the diameter of the DN after iteration of MN, F, and that is the exponent's estimates. Because for D is always like a strongest one, like P. And but for DN, the first KN steps is like a Q, which is a weaker. And then for the rest is also like P, at the most like P. Okay, at the most like P. Then, then you, you will have this estimation. You cancel everything and it tells you because this data is strictly larger than zero. And this one will tend to infinite. And this, okay, is contradicts to that your strong stable foliation is even smooth in the weak stable foliation. That gives you the proof like where you have the same smallest exponents. Okay. Uh, oh, and, okay, any question? Okay. Right now we have the same smallest exponents and we can try to define some kind of foliations, the patient stable foliation in the weak stable because, okay, I uh, just try here, because locally, you know, like at a point of weak stable for any point that is the weak stable foliation of P and we have to choose the smallest one that is contained in the weak stable minimal of P, right? That is the smallest one, H, X, well, it is, it is wet, not good. So that is the smallest one. So we can define a foliation in the weak stable, in the weak stable manifolds of P, such that two points in the same stable foliation if and only if the contracting rate of them is almost like the smallest one exponents. So this gives you, you actually define a foliation, right? Because this one is actually in the center is the weak one, and this is a stronger one. So you can define a strong foliations here, but just associated to the exponents of minimal one in the weak state, you define a foliation here. And notice that, this foliation is actually like locally, it is uniformly C1 because locally you, you can just look at the, the contracting, uniformly contracting of this. So 
And later, you, if you define it locally, how to extend it in the whole, because this one may be local, and how to define to in the whole weak stable leaf, you just iterate negatively, and you can extend this foliation in the whole weak stable for weak stable manifold of P. So at every point, you can define this foliation. All right, so that's something clear. And I want to show like this foliation is something holonomy invariant because this foliation is defined on the, peer, on the weak stable manifolds of periodic points and is actually defined in a dense subset of the manifolds. And it is everywhere. And the transversal of weak stable is SU foliation. And I want to show like this is actually like by SU foliation, it is holonomy invariant. And I notice like right now the holonomy is okay, it's a homeomorphism. So, and actually this C1. And if we can show like this foliation is holonomy invariant, in particularly, it shows like the dimension will be the same. It's the dimension will be the same. And if the holonomy is, invari is holonomy invariant, I can also extend it, this foliation on the weak stable manifolds of periodic points to the whole D torus. I just use the SU foliation to extend it because like in, in the D torus, like we have a lot, right? We have this weak stable of P and maybe we have something here, which is weak stable of Q that is for periodic points. But you also have other weak stable leaves here, which is not periodic points. How could I get the foliation? I just, this is the minimal one. I just use the holonomy maps of uh, SU foliations to extend it to the foliations here, maps them to here. And since for periodic points, they are coherent with this holonomy maps, so I can extend it uniquely in some sense to the pure foliation in the weak stable manifolds. Okay, and actually, how, to, how could you see that? It is actually the thing like, you look at the, how uh, by the topological conjugacy maps the things to some linear one, and we only need to show like the linear one is invariant by some translation because you just look at the picture. You will have some foliations here. You will have as a plan. Right now, we have some minimum of uh, the, the foliation corresponding to the minimal exponents here and some minimal foliations exponents here, right? And how could I to say it is SU foliation invariant? I just use conjugation to maps H to here and maps this one to here. And if this two, are invariant by translation, which is the holonomy of the linear model, then it is invariant by the holonomy of the SU foliation software of my F. That is the same. Okay. Uh, so otherwise I will show, uh, if this is not correct, which is not some holonomy invariant after some iterations, I will have some pictures here. Okay, let me come back to this picture because this is, uh, uh, this is very helpful. Okay, right now I have some foliations here. And also I have some foliations at Q. Okay, some foliations at Q. And I don't know these two foliation, maybe the dimension is even not the same. I don't know, but it's locally defined. And, but the thing is like, if I put a disc here, I know like this disc is contracting like the, with the minimal exponents here. And after some translation come, comes to here, if it's not coherent maps inside, it will be something like that. Almost the transverse, right? It's, it's some, in some sense transverse, but not truly transverse, but at least it's not contained in a leaf there. Then I can try to, in some sense, it is a transverse sense. Okay, notice here, I just look at by the translation, but the information of the translation tells you is that actually when you translate, you, you, uh, you are transverse here. Okay, I, I will see, because here is a disk here, you maps to here. And if you are transverse, not like that, this will be transverse here. And you maps inside, it uh, maps back, it is something transverse some of the transverse. So, and the transverse is uniformly after controversy. Now you can play the same game about, like before. 
you, you took the thing, it's like you took a small disk D here, which the contracting rate is with respect to the minimal one. And but here you are transverse. So your things comes to like this. Okay, by holonomy maps, that is your DN. And you know that you are transverse to the smallest exponents of your Q. So the contracting rate of this one is not like the minimal, not like the weak stable minimal. It will co corresponding to some transverse contracting rate of your Q. Okay, it will not be the same. So the key point is like the is uniformly transverse because it is done by some conjugacy tells you. Okay, it, it, because notice like your X n will tends to infinite. You will take a lot of DN, but they are uniformly transverse. Not we are not go flat and flat. That's not possible. They are uniformly transverse. Okay, and okay, and right now. I think you can imagine some arguments like before. Why? Because this one, the contracting rate is like minimal, minimal exponents. But this one, when you they are very close, the contracting rate is not like the minimal one. It will be the something weaker, right? It will be something weaker for the exponents. And so, and okay, here I I can do something by by another U holonomy comes to here and can give you some estimation about the contracting rate of that one. But this one is not so crucial for you see when smooth. This can be a one. But if I have this, it will be a little easier for me to do calculation. Okay, and okay, that's the picture I showed here. Like you take some small disks and you holonomies. If you are transverse here, so for first the key in steps, you can do the same arguments like uh, the contracting rate is around the second uh, exponents of Q, right? The second exponents of Q, which is um, not as stronger as, as P, right? For the first K in steps. And then for the rest, that is the strongest one like P. So you can do the same game as before. So that is a game like your MNK games, like very close in the first K in steps. So the contracting rate will be like Q. And then for the rest is, you are entering that the local strong stable manifolds of P. And so you will have some estimations about the diameter. The diameter growth will be something like that. Okay, the diameter growth like something like that. And this is the second smallest exponents for the first k in steps of Q, which is larger than the minimal exponent here. And Okay, and you have the different estimation again. It's almost the same thing. It's almost the same thing. And so you can do the calculation again. That is, this thing is uniformly uh, bounded from below, and you will have some first clean steps with uh, second exponents. And but this down is something stronger, so it will also tends to infinite. You just repeatedly use this argument and tells you, okay. Actually, it is a holonomy memory. Okay, holonomy memory. That SU foliation preserves everything, preserves everything. Okay, and now, as I said, like right now, you will have some foliations in the weak stable manifolds of your periodic points. Okay, weak stable, and it is SU holonomy invariant. So I can extend it, these things, this weak stable on periodic points by taking that it is invariant by the holonomy, that's what we have. And now there are several things. The thing is like locally, this on um, every periodic points, locally, this thing is uniformly C1 smooth. And you know like that your holonomy of SU foliation is also C1 plus smooth. And then you can extend it and by some compactness. And actually what you, when you extend it is to a foliation on D torus, and with uniformly C1 leaves. And also it's uniformly holder continuous of its tangent bundle. Okay, you get a uh, uni uni uniform things. All right, and right now it's something like, okay, you get a foliation, which is invariant and uniformly, and it's actually sub foliated your weak stable foliation. And that's the first bundle actually we split it out from the weak stable bundle. Okay, 
moreover, we know like that for, for these bundles, and actually we use the conjugacy, and uh, we, we can know like this foliation after conjugacy, it is some kind of has some invariance by linear translation. Okay, if you have a foliation on the torus, which is invariant by the linear translation, and actually you can show like it is also invariant, and it can show that actually this foliation after conjugacy, that means you have a foliation here, which is sub foliation, your weak stable, and you maps down, it actually gives you a linear foliation in the linear in, in, in the action of A. And it is also invariant because the foliation above is F invariant. So after the conjugacy, you get everything. Like it's a linear foliation on D torus, and it's also like its tangent bundle is actually associated with some eigenspace of your A. And also you can do some growth rate like estimation and to show like actually it's the smallest exponents of your F is actually equal to equals to the exponents of A in this linear subspace. You, you need to do some estimation like uh, in, in the universal cover and to say how it grows. Okay, this, it is uh, something like uh, quite similar to, to the things for, for growth rate about like in the, our serial one about to show the leaf countries because your edge is bounded with identity in the universal cover. So you can imagine things like that. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing you need because, oh, no, because when, when I play the game here, like some defending games here, I also, I, I need like the strong stable foliation is minimal. So that's the place we need irreducibility. And that's the key points. You can say like, we apply the, this argument repeatedly. I think at least I've repeated three or four times. And all this are relies on re, uh, irreducibility. Okay, that's, uh, that's the essential part. That's the essential part. Without this, uh, I think we can get nothing. nothing. Okay. Now, and things to get the dominant splitting, and I think that thing is uh, uh, following, at least I read this lemma from the Christian and Lorenzo's paper about it, how to get the dominant splitting. Because right now we have a quotient of dynamics, which on the weak stable modulus, the, the, the minimal exponents of this one, and it is holder continuous, it is holder continuous. And also like, uh, and you can play the same game like this again. I, I don't want to repeat it again, but it's the same game. And to tell you, okay, the second exponents are uniformly gapped with the smallest one. So that tells you, okay, in here, you have the smallest exponents and the transversely, like in the transverse direction, you have something, okay? Here also in the transverse, you have something. And this transverse direction, the exponents are uniformly bounded from the weak, uh, the smallest one. You have uniformly bound. Okay, and right now you can write the take a, a holder continuous space and write the uh, the derivatives to be something like that. That is uh, a continuous things, a holder continuous things, and this ax is the corresponding. Oh, sorry, I make some mistake here. Is minimal. I lost the minimal here. That is corresponding to your minimal one. And this is a quotient bundle about that one. And you know, like here, all exponents are equal to the minimal exponents. And here is something uniformly larger than that. And this gives you, and it's continuous and uniformly bounded. And actually it gives you a dominant split. Okay, dominant split. Okay. And so you have some estimations like that, and which is, continuous. So this gives you a dominant splitting like that. You can split the weak stable to the weak stable of minimal and weak and with some F. You have a uniformly dominant splitting. That's the same. Okay. And then here is also, you can show like, because all exponents here are lambda of minimal exponents. And the here in F, it's uniformly larger than that plus some data, and it's also an absolutely partially hyperbolic splitting and also satisfies the center bunching condition. Okay, and then you, you tells you, and this is jointly integrable, tells you actually you put these two together as the new strong stable foliations, and it is jointly integrable with your unstable foliation. 
because this is a linear. So and H F U is linear, too linear for the issue as joint the integral form. And this gives you actually you can play induction. And this F is your new weak stable, and this is your strong stable. You can play the game again, again, again until your F couldn't split it at all. So this I play some induction, and this gives you the proof of your theorem too. And I, I think I will stop here. Thank you. Okay, are there questions? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. At some point, you mentioned that the periodic orbit measures are dense in the space. Yeah. Can you just say what hypothesis precisely? You... Uh, because here we are considering some kind of anosophic diffeomorphisms. So you, you have the, um, the shading lemma. So, like for any ergodic measures, you can use some tracing by some periodic orbits. So I think it's an older results by Zygmunt for oh, no, okay. okay. Yeah, Sorry. it's older series by Zygmunt, it's 1970s and 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I think it, because here like, you have a shadowing, so the periodic measures are dense in the space of in very yes, measures. What, yeah. When you're talking about the partially of the body complex? Uh, no, 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 because we, we are also we are also at first. So, so the whole things are also it's partially hyperbolic, but the, the center boundary is uniformly contracted. Oh, Ali. No, no, just uh, to say that you are using really the the abelian structure of TD. You're you're using that your manifold is torus. Yeah, fact. yeah. So I don't remember in the example of smale due to borel. Uh -huh. uh, so do we have the joint integrability or not? Or ES yes. and the U. In here, I think like uh, for, for that one, I think it's uh, six dimensional things yes. and it's ES1 plus ES2 plus ES3 and E3U, E3U2 and U1. And also it has, but these two are not integrable, but your, we, if you put your unstable together, it is integrable with this one, also integrable with this one. It has joint integrability in our setting, but 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 the these two are not integral. So this means that you really need to be on the torus. This is an uh, example that no 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 because here is the things. Actually, you asked a very good question, and yeah, the thing is like here we can also try to prove the same thing in smell zigzag. Like the, this one, strong stable one, joint integrable with unstable, and whether you have the the things about like the the spectrum rigidity in this weak stable, in this center two, because these two are joint integrable also. It also joint integrable. So you can play the same games and uh, actually like, uh, uh, yes, that's that's truly a good question. And the only thing like a little bit different, I think almost can parallel to do that. The only thing is like, you need to see whether you have the defending approximation, how the density of the strong stable formations in the neo manifold. that's something you need to do. Yeah, that's something uh, I think like, uh, yeah, some, yes. Okay, no further question then. Thank you again. Thank you. And there's a copy break until 10.20. Sorry, I <laughs>